Hey guys, Tim with Old School Tips and Techniques. Hope this finds everybody doing well. It's been a uh, few weeks, maybe a few months since I checked in. Summer's here. Going in a lot of different directions, uh, but always finding time to shoot my bow. Always time, finding time to fiddle around with my bow. And um, I want to sit down and go over with you exactly what I settled in for the upcoming season, which is in two weeks here in Pennsylvania. We're going to get started and... Uh, Still a little warm, still a little buggy, so uh, hopefully uh, some cold weather will come in just to cool it off a little bit, make the hunting a little bit easier. A couple things I want to cover today is I want to go over start to finish what bow I'm going to be uh, carrying in the woods. Also at the same time, I want to go over a um, little review of the low bow. That is the bow I'm going to be carrying from Trad Tech. A couple of you reached out to me and said, hey, can I do a review? So uh, hopefully I'll give you what you're looking for there. Uh, real happy with the bow. Hope it works out. Hope it does what it's supposed to if um, I can do my part over the next uh, next couple months here. So give me a few minutes. We'll catch right back up with you and uh, jump right in. guys so uh, let's talk a little bit about the bow this is a bow from trad tech archery uh, it's called a low bow L O B O and what's kind of neat about it is it's a the riser the entire riser is carbon fiber and uh, that's something new for me because I've never really had a bow that has carbon fiber in the riser uh, a lot of times you see it in the limbs uh, as you do with these limbs, and the limbs on this bow currently are the RC wood limbs from Trad Tech, which are basically carbon on the back and belly with probably, it's got a wood core, um, lamination in the center, and uh, that's probably maple, but again, uh, carbon on the back and belly, great limbs, uh, 45 pounds. But what I really like about this bow, and I like about the riser, is the feel and uh, right out of the gate when I got the bow and I mentioned this to you guys once before what's really neat about it and if some of you guys have shot recurves and long bows when you shoot a recurve a lot of times you'll have a little bit of limb vibration after the shot that's uh that's kind of part of it with a recurve some of the recurves you find every now and then are pretty you know they come to a pretty abrupt halt um, but most of them have a little bit of limb shake when you shoot a long bow a lot of times what we like is when you shoot a long bow the limbs come to a little bit more of an abrupt stop and it's just a nice bump in your hand and uh, that's what I found with this now it's maybe it's a combination of the limbs and the riser but on release I don't feel anything in this bow it's probably more dead in hand than any bow I've ever shot long bow or recurve and along with that it's quiet and I'm a little bit as I've mentioned before a stickler for a bow being quiet. I'm primarily a deer hunter and uh, the bow needs to be quiet um, or I'm not going to shoot it. So let's get into it a little bit. As I mentioned to you once before in another video, um, it's an A riser, I'm not sorry, a, a forward riser. And what that means is it has a little bit of an A shape to it. And when you get a riser like this, what it does is it allows you to carry a little higher brace height due to the design of the bow and it gets your hand out a little farther in front of the limbs okay so the combination of those two things and a lot of you guys if you're coming over from compounds you guys know a shorter brace height in a compound makes the bow a little more finicky a little bit more temperamental and um, I don't get this with this this you know this particular bow setup um, I like having that riser out a little farther and it becomes a little bit, in my mind, a little bit more pointable. Okay, so that, that's one of the positives I found with the bow. One of the, one of the hurdles I have, one of the negatives with the bow, and I didn't like it right out of the gate, was the, the grip. And um, it was one of those grips that 
I just kept finding my hand sliding out of a little bit and this is not my idea this was my friend Bill's idea and the first time I saw this idea I, I wrote him pretty hard I gave him a hard time uh, called him a few names here and there and uh, what he used on his grip and he didn't do it quite as aesthetically as this but he used grip tape and um, the grip tape is what your uh, you know your kids would use on their skateboard um, I had some grip tape because we use it on our porch steps uh, to keep from the steps from being slippery so I had some of this grip tape I saw it in my workbench one day and I said you know I'm gonna I'm gonna give Bill's method a try here I'm not gonna tell him about it obviously still haven't told him um, but what I do is I take a little bit of grip tape and you can see it right here in the palm and then this is just this is a little bit more my uh, you know a little more flair it's just another thin piece of it here on the side and I'm here to tell you guys it changed the feel of the bow completely and since this stuff goes on skateboards and on steps it's 3m 3m makes this particular brand it's super sticky so it doesn't roll up on the edges at all um, it takes a beating uh, it, it, it hasn't worn out and I've had it on here for quite some time so maybe I'm the first to bring this to light with some of these traditional guys but if you have a bow that your hand is sliding out of and you don't want to go with um, the racquetball grip tape because I find that to be a little bit too tacky um, and you don't want to go with that because it does build up the size of your grip um, give this stuff a call uh, a try you can you can buy it at Lowe's and again this is the uh, 3M makes very good tapes and very good types of um, double-sided tape, stuff that sticks. So um, if you have a choice to go with the 3M, go with the 3M uh, because it works fantastic and it'll last you forever. You know, I have a pretty good sized roll and I, I could do this probably to, you know, 50 or 60 different bows. It doesn't take much. So uh, give that a try. Um, let's move on to a second for my rest setup that I'm shooting on this particular bow. One of the problems with the low bow is the shelf is cut. It's cut considerably past center, um, almost to the point where it's a little bit too much. So I tried shooting it off the shelf, and it worked out good. Um, I don't get the consistency in the flight that I like that I get from a rest. And kind of like once you go to a rest, it's hard to go back, um, especially if you're a tuning guy and I like to shoot bear shafts and I can shoot 10 identical bear shafts uh, when it's coming off a rest because it absorbs some of my mistakes. This particular rest, as you can see, it goes through the burger button um, in the riser that this particular bow has um, and it's a, a, uh, a center rest. Uh, so I can kind of move it in and out according to the center shot. It does have a flipper arm which is going to help get out of the way and it's got a little bit of a cushion um, in the rest setup right here which is just again it's going to help absorb any mistakes in our release the one thing I didn't care for is it's a little higher off the shelf than I like uh, but I have gotten used to that uh, what I did is I put a little bit of velcro on the shelf and on the side plate and uh, that gives my mind a visual that it's a little bit closer to a uh, little bit closer to my hand it's obviously not but again I've gotten used to it uh, hopefully that noise isn't too bad because it's raining pretty darn hard here right now but uh, let's go on a little bit um, the string that I have on the bow is as my buddy Alan from 10 string strings refers to it a dinosaur string it's Dyna 97 uh, nothing fancy a little bit old-school I have one set of silencers on the top, rubber whiskers, one set on the bottom. I originally had one on the top, or two on the top and two on the bottom. And what I found with that particular setup is it slowed the bow down quite a bit. It was extremely quiet, um, but I could see it sucking the life out of the string a little bit, maybe to the tune of 6 feet per second. Um, when I went to a single set, the bow was still pretty darn quiet, quiet enough to hunt with, um, and I found that I was able to go, instead of 600 
being in center shot hours, I was able to go up to 500, which is a little bit heavier, um, and, and not take too much of the speed out. So uh, my hour setup right now for hunting is going to be a beam and center shot. Again, this is the 500 one. I have them cut to 28 and a half. I have a brass insert now. Some of the brass inserts you are coming 75 grains. You can snap the nub off and it becomes 50 grains. That's what I did. So I have a, a 50 grain brass insert up, up, up front and I'm using a 150 grain Magnus Stinger four blade broadhead. Um, I really like the Magnus. I use something called a ready edge to sharpen it. If I need to sharpen them, they do come sharp out of the box. The bevel on the ready edge and the bevel on the Magnus broadhead is identical. So just a couple of swipes and it's back to being as sharp as it was out of the box. Uh, so if you guys do shoot Magnus broadheads, you're looking for a, um, a sharpening system. Uh, you know, you go on Amazon.com and pick up a Ready Edge. It's one of the carbide sharpeners. I've been using it for probably uh, 20 years and have had nothing but success when I go with the Magnus Broadhead. So a, a quick way to get that edge back on there. I keep in, in the house quite a stock full of the bleeder blades uh, to replace them. You know, after they go into the dirt, it happens, um, or they go through a deer. So uh, that's something else. I'm still old school, I still shoot five inch broadheads. Um, I do not shoot um, shield cut, I found them to be a little bit noisier. I go with five inch parabolic. I cut them, they're pretty much die cut. I used to cut them all myself with a little chopper, but I, I've just been buying them die cut the past couple years. Uh, they work out fine, they hold their, um, they hold their shape pretty good. Um, I do spray them down with some duck oil which basically is going to give a little bit of a waterproofing um, if we do get into some humid weather or get into some wet weather that helps them out a little bit. I'm not a big fan of hunting in the rain unless I go away on a hunt somewhere um, but around the house if it's raining I usually um, tap out I head back to the house. Uh, so that's going to be my setup. A total hour weights coming in. I'm going to say it's right around 455 grains, 460 grains. Um, I'm shooting 45, 46 pounds right in there. So uh, just a touch more than I like. I usually like to be in that nine grain per pound. Uh, this is getting closer to 10, but I'm really happy with the flight. Uh, I, I'm just, I just don't want to uh, dicker around with it too much anymore. So I'm going to stick with this setup. Uh, brace height on the bow, you know, a lot of times when somebody tells me brace height, I said, from where? And the reason I say that is, it's getting to be a little bit more universal where bowyers and bow hunters, you know, bow guys are measuring it from the throat of the grip. I measure my eight inch brace height, eight and an eighth inch on this bow from the throat of the grip. Just so you know, guys, some bowyers do measure it from the back of the riser. Okay, so if you do talk to a bowyer, just be clear on that. Ask them, say, hey, are you measuring the brace height from the deepest part of the grip where you're measuring it from the back of the riser, um, just to clarify. Other than that, um, everything is pretty much as you see it. I put a rubber uh, tip protector on the bottom, and that is about it. I'm going with the stock bow right from the uh, right from uh, Trad Tech. Um, I have a th uh, Thunderhead, or I'm sorry, Thunderhorn quiver on here. It's a four hour quiver. I prefer five. I usually carry four broadheads and a blunt. Um, I'm either going to add another spot for an arrow, which I can do on this particular quiver, um, or I'm just going to stick with four broadheads this year and I'll go with that. I've just gotten to the point over the years where I, I just prefer four broadheads in the quiver. It seems to be the happy place for me and uh, that's about it. So. Our season is only uh, two weeks away. Uh, get out, do some practice. Uh, we're kind of getting down to the end line here. If you have questions, reach out in the comments. If you like what I'm bringing you, please uh, click the like button. Uh, the subscribe button is always nice. Uh, we're getting quite a few subscribers. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be back to you guys in the next week or so with another video. And I just want to go through. I have a buddy that I hunt with quite a bit that carries a 
a real big pack in the woods every every time we go out and you know it looks like he's going away for a two or three day camping trip and what I want to do is I want to go over with you um, I want to break down exactly what's in my pack um, I've really broken it down over the years so there's everything I need nothing I don't maybe if you go through my pack with me there's something you can pick up to tell you thought was a good idea uh, maybe it'll help you lose a couple items out of your pack um, or again maybe you're like my buddy uh, maybe you like to go in the woods um, with a three-day supply of everything you need. I just like to go in as light as I can and as fast as I can in case I got to run from somebody. So uh, we'll get back to you guys in another week or so with that. Um, thanks for checking in. Really enjoy having you along.